full history of the evolution of crocodilomorphs. Modern crocodiles and alligators are among the few animals of the dinosaur age that not only outlive these giant lizards, but have hardly changed since that time. Today, we will try to understand the reasons that caused the division of the common ancestor of these animals into dinosaurs and crocodilomorphs. We will also find out why the ancestors of crocodiles managed to survive the catastrophe that destroyed the dinosaurs and why crocodiles have changed so little since then. We encourage all dinosaur lovers and viewers who want to learn more about the evolution of life on our planet as well as environmental problems and scientists forecast about the future of mankind to subscribe to our channel. Actively express their opinion on the topics of the videos and like the materials that they like. After the grandiose extinction, which marked the end of the Permian period, a large number of the most diverse ecological niches were vacated. These niches began to be actively occupied by reptiles related to the Archosaurus. Closer to the middle of the Triassic period, the Archosaurus were divided into two large groups, Ornithodira and Cruatorsans. Ornithodires included dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and birds, while Cruatorsans included crocodilomorphs and suchias, as well as phytosaurs. Phytosaurs were not the ancestors of modern crocodiles, but at the beginning of the Triassic period, they were the most similar to those crocodiles that now live on Earth. They lived in freshwater reservoirs and ate fish. The only significant external difference between the phytosaurs and modern crocodiles was the location of the nostrils. Among the representatives of this detachment, they were located not at the end of the muzzle, but at its crown. And the first crocodilomorphs at that time became the most common and dangerous land predators, and sometimes herbivores. And for this, they needed to acquire completely different useful devices. Some of them learned to move on two legs and run fast. Others were light and mobile. Many crocodilomorphs of the second half of the Triassic reached very impressive sizes. Scientists have not yet decided which of the late Triassic crocodilomorphs was the ancestor of all living crocodiles and alligators. But the most likely contenders for this role are the two species, Urpetosuchus and Doswellia. At the moment, scientists have discovered two types of Urpetosus. One of them live on the territory of modern Scotland and the other in the USA. They were no more than 60 centimeters long and may have been pack animals preying on small herbivores. Doswellia also lived on the territory of the modern North American continent. It had a length of up to 2 meters but would not even reach the knees of an adult in height. Its distinctive features were a pronounced dorsal shell and an unusual structure of the chest. The ribs of this animal were bent almost at a right angle. Another contender for the title of the ancestor of all crocodiles, some scientists call Silisuchus. This species lived in China, led a semi-aquatic lifestyle, and ate fish. Its length was about 3 to 4 meters, and its height was up to 2 meters. It is believed that the back of the Silisuchus was decorated with a crest like a dorsal sail of the Demetrodon or the Spinosaurus. Among the crocodilomorphs of the Triassic period, one can also note such a detachment as the Spinosuchus. They had a length of about 2 meters, but at the same time, they were quite light. One might even say refined animals. Their long limbs were located under the body. It is believed that these animals were able to run fast. But the Permian extinction made accessible not only the places of large and small land predators. Therefore, some Kurotorsans came to a vegetarian way of eating. The herbivorous family of ancient crocodilomorphs was named Ethosaurus. They were distributed almost all over the world. It is the largest species, reaching 5 meters in length. Probably the evolution of living beings of this period developed more rapidly than any other time. 
Each species sought to get ahead of its competitors in the race for vacant places at the top of the food pyramid. The first dinosaurs could only dream of future dominance over the entire planet for hundreds of millions of years. But another extinction led to the disappearance of the largest crocodilomorphs. Only the inhabitants of rivers, swamps, and coastal zones retained their positions. The rest of the territory, as a result, went to the dinosaurs. By a strange coincidence, this is what saved the crocodilomorphs from complete extinction with the dinosaurs. At the beginning of the Jurassic period, dinosaurs began to dominate the entire planet. Only reservoirs and coastal zone remained for crocodilomorphs. Therefore, they had no choice but to start developing adaptations suitable for survival in the proposed conditions as well as partially masters of the sea and oceans. Their bodies stretched out, limbs began to be located along the body and not under it, the muzzles of crocodilomorphs became narrow and elongated, their bodies became covered with a thick shell. Sometimes, the evolution of crocodilomorphs took quite a bizarre form. For example, a species such as Stomatosuchus is believed to have fed on plankton, just like modern whales. And a group of marine reptiles called the Taladosuchians have ditched the tough shell. They had become more streamlined and probably swam faster. Some varieties of crocodilomorphs had even begun to switch by replacing their paws with full-fledged flippers. It would be interesting to see what the further evolution of such creatures would lead to. But by the beginning of the Cretaceous period, dinosaurs and other marine lizards had ousted crocodilomorphs from the seas as well. And now there are practically no crocodiles living in saltwater. Vivid examples of modern saltwater crocodiles are several species living in Southeast Asia and Australia. And even then, many of them do not constantly live in salt water, but only swim across it from one island or river mouth to another. Therefore, by the middle of the Cretaceous period, crocodilomorphs had only to develop as freshwater predators. But here, they surpassed the dinosaurs in many ways, and among them, there were real giants. Sarcosuchus is probably the most famous and one of the largest crocodilomorphs discovered by scientists. For all their similarity to modern crocodiles, Sarcosuchus were only their distant relatives. The length of these monsters reached 9 meters and according to some estimates, even 12 meters. They weighed up to 2 tons. But the Danosuchus, which became extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period, belonged to the alligator family of the crocodile order. They lived on the territory of modern North America and, according to various estimates, had a length of 8.5 to 12 meters and weighed about 2.5 to 8.5 tons. In general, the territories of the ancient supercontinent Pangaea, which later became South America, Africa, and Australia, were densely populated with a wide variety of crocodilomorphs. By the end of the age of dinosaurs, the ancestors of crocodiles and alligators became perfect freshwater predators, ideally adapted to life in these conditions. Nature had nothing to add to the arsenal of devices they used, and since it was not possible for crocodiles to occupy new habitats, they practically stopped in their evolutionary development. It is these monsters that we see on Earth now that lived during the end of the Cretaceous period. Together with dinosaurs, the largest representatives of crocodilomorphs died out. Scientists suggest that the lifestyle and ecological niche into which they were forced out of by more adapted dinosaurs became the salvation for smaller species. Crocodiles are also able to survive by eating once a year. They are also essentially omnivores. They are able to obtain the necessary energy not only from meat but also from carrion. It is believed that those species of crocodilomorphs that survived could burrow into the bottom silt and feed on almost the same silt, the remains of aquatic animals, and even their own excrement. Also, crocodiles are not alien to such a phenomenon as cannibalism. 
A group of reptiles called Eusuchus, which include all types of crocodiles, alligators, caimans, and gharials, was able to survive the global catastrophe and give rise to new branches of the development of crocodiles. But they apparently did not have time to move to land again. It was occupied by more developed mammals. Now this greatly affects the lives of modern crocodiles. The descendants of one of those creatures that also survived the dinosaurs are actively destroying the habitat of crocodiles. And that is people. Scientists note the amazing ability of crocodiles to adapt to changes in living conditions. Their ancestors, in a short period of time, by the standards of evolution, changed the structure of their bodies and their diet, quickly capturing new territories for life. But the descendants of ancient reptiles may not be able to cope with human activity. We express our gratitude to the viewers who watched this video to the end. If you are interested in the topic of the evolution of different animal species, then we recommend you pay attention to other videos posted on our channel.